in this lecture we will discuss finfet standard cell layout and uh, some aspects of circuit design this is a part of module 6 so we will first discuss the layout and layout density and uh, then we will discuss effective capacitances and their implication on circuit design so important design rules in finfet technology you will have the design rule of uh, minimum metal gate or uh, to fin spacing which is a different design rule and uh, metal gate spacing and related to pin uh, fin pitch so th these kind of design rules would be different from what you find in bulk technologies or planar technologies so the device structure is again for a recap the device structure is like this the fin goes through the uh, uh, as a double gate or sometimes triple gate device and the gate surrounds it this is the gate oxide and source drain and source pads would be there on the two sides there some research technologies do offer a independent gate functionality where both the gates are separated and they are given different contacts and they can be given different bias voltages so if we look at the layout uh, then this is the a single fin device or even a planar device would look like this so the source and drain and the, here you have gate in finfet technology the gate is drawn like this and you have the source and drain pads and the fins would be going through the gate in this manner so all these fins are now parallel and therefore if you want to increase the current of the device then you have to increase in the size of the device you increase the number of fins there are limitations on the number of fins due to manufacturability issues so the number of fins is usually around 4 so that is the maximum number of fins allowed so if you want to have a larger size then you have to have parallel device this repeated again and kept in parallel number of fins cannot be increased beyond a point so if we want two fingered fin fed device then similar to the bulk device we can actually make a two fingered fin fed device here the drain is being shared between this and these devices so these are the fins so these are four fins in parallel so this is a nor gate the bulk nor gate would look like this so here you can have a different p to n wp by wn ratio so here you have two fingers for the p devices so the p device width is different from the n device width as you can see whereas in a fin fit you can have the number of fins different so to change the wp by wn ratio you can only change the number of fins so it is quantized you cannot have continuous change in wp by wn but it is a quantized wp by wn you can change in quantums only it cannot be continuous in the bulk and in finfet it is quantized so the drive strength of a fin fed device is determined by the ratio of fin height and channel length we assume that the top gate is inactive so in that case fin height would determine the surface inversion as well as bulk inversion so it would be therefore the current drive strength would be determined by the fin height and the channel length number of fins as we have seen in the layout the number of fins determine the wp by wn ratio and uh, to balance the currents and to measure the currents one needs to use the sub threshold or moderate inversion current expressions the the layout could also have this orientation here one can see that the number of fins is determining this is wp and this wn would be proportional to that because of the four fins here the contacts gate contact is given here and the output uh, contact is given here this is a fingered layout so the drain is being shared between the two fingers so now this finger has four fins both the fingers have four fins now we discuss another aspect which is interesting and important in fin fed circuit operation for example in this inverter if you increase the size of the second stage inverter in that case the transition time at the input would increase input of the second stage likewise 
Suppose the transition time here at the input of the first stage keeps on increasing, then what happens to the transition at the output of the first stage? Now, the output fall would also happen and the point where the input and output voltages cross each other would now change because you are keeping the same load capacitance, but you are increasing the input transition time. So, when this point changes, around this point, what we observe is that for a certain value of gate voltage and drain voltage difference, the electron density in the low doped part of the channel of the extension. So, th this is drain extension and there is this low doped part of the drain extension very close to the channel. So, in this low doped part of the drain extension, the electron density gets modulated significantly by the fringing electric fields from the gate. So, now and that electron density would depend on the gate to drain voltage difference. So, as you increase the drain voltage for a given gate voltage, the electron density here keeps on reducing and it would, uh, uh, so, the, so there is strong inversion, it, it can go from strong inversion to moderate or weak inversion in this low doped part of the drain extension. So, that would change the capacitance from gate to the low doped part of the drain extension and th therefore, the effective gate capacitance. So, when you increase the input transition time, since the output larger part of output transition takes place within the input transition time, the low doped part of the drain extension would get turned on, would have a higher inversion charge for a smaller value of gate voltage and that would increase the effective capacitance of the inverter. So, that is what we observe that as you increase the input transition time, the effective capacitance changes. So, as you increase the input transition time, the input transition time is increased, the input capacitance of the inverter seen keeps on increasing and this happens in the strong inversion regime. What happens in the moderate inversion regime? So, in the strong inversion regime, the increase is larger, in the moderate inversion regime, the increase is smaller. How do we explain that? So, in the moderate or weaker inver weak inversion regime, what we observe is that when you increase the gate voltage, the increase in the channel charge is not as significant as the increase in the charge in the extension region, low dope part of the extension region. Whereas, in the strong inversion regime, the increase in the channel charge is more significant than the increase in the inversion charge in the low dope part of the drain extension. Due to this reason, so as you keep on increasing the gate voltage, suppose you increase the gate voltage till 0.4 volts, we observe that the when you come closer to the BDD, closer to say 0.4 volts, that suppose that is the BDD, you are operating in near threshold voltage regime. So, when you come closer to 0.4 volts, the main channel gate capacitance increases and the capacitance component because of the low doped part of the drain extension that becomes less significant. So, as you increase the transition time, when you increase the transition time, a larger output transition would happen for a smaller input gate voltage or input voltage. So, in an NMOS fit in an inverter, if you take the example of an inverter, this is the input and this is the output then for this for a given gate voltage you would observe that output transition if you increase the input transition time a larger output transition would happen for the same gate voltage so therefore the effect of gate to source voltage for the n mosfet device would now be larger for the same gate voltage it means the main channel would turn on main channel would turn on for the same gate voltage. As you increase the transition time, the main channel would turn on for a smaller gate voltage. So, the main channel would turn on because the drain voltage has now reduced to a larger value for the same gate voltage. 
So, in the regions closer to the drain, since the electron density, what we observe is that in the near threshold regime or when in moderate inversion, the electron density in the main channel and low doped part of the extension is comparable. Therefore, the drop of drain voltage into the channel, the drop of VDS into the channel, if we call this uh, drop of VDS in the extension region and drop of VDS in the channel region, we would observe that in above threshold regime, because the resistance is larger, the drop of drain voltage in the extension region would be larger. Whereas, in the moderate inversion regime, since the electron density is comparable, the drop of drain voltage in the extension region would be smaller compared to its relative value in the above threshold regime. So, therefore, the phenomenon of increase in capacitance because of a larger output transition taking place for the same gate voltage with larger input transition times is different and therefore, you would have a different rate of increase in input capacitance of the inverter or any standard cell with increasing transition time, input transition time in above threshold regime and in below threshold regime. So, in this uh, lecture, we discussed the layout of FinFET devices, fingered layout and impact of quantization on WP by WN of FinFET device and impact of low doped region in the drain extension close to the channel on the input capacitances of FinFET device in above threshold and below threshold or moderate inversion regimes. Thank you.